So I'm Jackie Kenner. I believe I was a part of experimental programs. In particular, the name of a corporation that I remember is the USS R Corp, who was based on a moon or dwarf planet, potentially large asteroid between Jupiter and Saturn. And they're in the uh, base or lab where I was, they were experimenting on beings to try and find uh, life extension genes or components of their bodies. My role there was very basic to stand beside uh, these tables where they were conducting little uh, operations or prodding at them and extracting things and simply to say if the being had life force or not. So they would continue to uh, experiment on them and they couldn't always tell if they were alive or if their consciousness had left their um, bodies, which is not, they didn't always have human bodies. Um, and I just connected to these beings and reported if there was life or not for six years in a row. <laughs> I worked in management consulting, and then I shifted into operations for tech startups working in AI and pharmaceuticals. They were operational roles. During my time in the Earth Matrix, I definitely would get, I would think I was daydreaming, and I was remembering, or I would think I was, what uh, acupuncturist told me was active imagination. And I think that's a really detrimental word for people that we should really embrace the things that come in when we allow our minds to relax. So I work as a psychic medium. I conduct medium sessions for people wanting to connect with someone who's passed out of their physical body because the soul never dies. Um, and I first met you, James, looking for help reconciling memories and what people call bleed-throughs from off-planet experiences. At the time, I thought it was a past life or a simultaneous life, and I wasn't really familiar with programs whatsoever. And you, first of all, offered me a non-judgmental ear, and then second of all, connected me to resources, and third, helped me with your regressions. I reached out to James because I had a memory around age seven that didn't fit in my Earth timeline, but it was on Earth. It was a lot like MK Ultra programming with less um, torture, but there was the video training, which is very common, trauma-based video training. There, I remembered um, drinking orange juice every morning before starting the training, and I was kept in a side house of a really large house on what I thought was the ocean, but now understand to have been a private lake. And um, it was actually quite, it was really uh, traumatizing to remember that um, just stone cold sober and awake, have it come through. And um, so we took all of that memory into a regression and were able to get more information about where it was and how long I was there and what was going on. So. I would drink orange juice in the morning and then I would, the TV would click on and I would go sit in front of it and it would start with a swirl and I would watch the swirl and then it would start flashing what looked like just changing the channel but it would be Bob Ross and then something horrific that I didn't want to look at whether it was a crime scene or tortured animals or you know something that's highly disturbing to the human psyche and then it would be like the Three Stooges and then and it would just cycle through and I would watch that and then two men would come in with a piece of paper and ask me questions, psychic questions. And I would answer their questions and I thought they were really dumb. I thought they were really low level questions but I would answer them. This repeated for roughly three weeks. It's hard. I think there were drugs in the orange juice. It's really hard to keep accurate track of time. Plus when you're a kid, I mean, who knows? You don't know how long summer break feels like four years when you're a kid. And, um, my senses, there were other kids, but I was allowed to sleep on the couch cushions. I remember feeling special for doing that. The particular 
um, recruiting phase that I was in, which is what I call it, I don't know, it's speculation, you weren't supposed to induce a lot of fear. There was a shock factor, meaning watching the videos, but your psychic senses actually can become dumbed down when you're in a deep state of fear. And when I listen to other people's stories, I, I really feel like an outcast in a way because they were trying to avoid inducing fear states in us because they wanted to keep our psychic abilities strong. I found the house, I drove by it, and that's how I learned that it was not on the ocean like I thought as a kid, but instead on a, a lake, and it's in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. I don't know if there were a lot of other kids. I knew of one boy, and I knew it was a privilege to sleep on the couch cushions. So I didn't have big missing time pieces like other people, and I, I, when this memory came through, it came through fully and completely. So I had never thought about it up until it was two and a half years, two years ago when I had this memory and it came in so casually and effortlessly that I was able to really remember it and ponder it all the way up until the point when, when I realized that the man in the memory, the car that I was in in the memory, the neighborhood that I was in in the memory did not happen in my life. And that actually is, uh, it, it's extremely disturbing. I had a panic attack and my boyfriend, now husband, had to pull over the car and calm me down and I was actually pretty messed up for a few days. The memory that I have of when I think I left planet was, was 12. And it went from being underground on Earth in a completely not it wasn't guarded, it wasn't protected, you just drove down a road into these two trap doors outside of Amarillo, Texas. And I went in and I was shocked at how big this room was. And then next thing I know, I wake up with a shaved head, having had surgery done, and don't feel like I'm on earth. And was told, you've had surgery on your liver gallbladder to allow your body to be in space which I've since researched that astronauts' livers fatigue or something happens when they're in outer space, and so it limits the amount of time you can be out there. That's a real thing that happens. I have no memory of return whatsoever. I have no memory of ending. I have even the last moving from USS R Corp into what I believe was a more um, marine-based role. I can't say that with certainty, but I believe that it was. I have, it fades out. I don't know how it ended. I don't remember a lot of the time. As far as I know, I did not have a title nor rank. I was working class, and um, some people would describe it as, a, you know, a slave role. I think there's a lot of um, associations around what being a slave is is that make it hard to envision that being the correct title but in essence it was i was at some point consented to sharing my consciousness with altered technologies um, not necessarily knowing about this role but in if you want to call a spade a spade it was kind of a slave role i was in service there i had a duty to do and i wasn't allowed to get out like it or not so there were a variety of beings. Right? We might be more comfortable calling them creatures because they're not um, humanoid or human looking. Uh, all of them had some level of consciousness. Um, many of them were so out of their atmospheric element that they were just in bad shape. Um, and then there's one that I talk about in particular that was eel looking, a large eel and it had a sort of chicken beak. Its level of consciousness is beyond anything I've experienced on Earth by far. And uh, it was connected to its others, almost like a hive mind in a way that had a, a massive impact on me. Um, and then there were, uh, if I had, they're all beings, they all had consciousness, but there were more creatures than beings in the way that we might understand um, 
like a gray or, you know, two arms, two legs and a head. And I, I have described this and remember it as they felt more like sea creatures. Like they were bringing them in from the sea than from, you know, land-based or air-based creatures. You know, probably hundreds of different creatures came through. Um, there was a lab room where some of their carcasses or bodies were stored in jars. Um, and my guess is that these creatures had um, something of interest to Ark Corp. Uh, they were treated like uh, lab mice. N absolutely no regard for any kind of intelligence or uh, consciousness level that they may have. As far as the uniform goes, I wore gray. Uh, dark gray, almost black, and there were doctor's jackets, like the standard you would expect surgeon jacket, and then people who were of higher ranking had khaki colored, um, more like a uniform, and uh, there were, there was from time to time people coming and going that were in a white outfit with a black belt and black um, things on their sleeves and uh, you changed though if you were planning to stay so this would be like a transit outfit and then when you were planning to stay on this uh, dwarf planet or asteroid or moon you would change into um, more like jumpsuit type things I do feel like it was underground I don't feel like it was above ground I feel like there was a small platform above ground and then everything went below surface um, the room with the jars looked like what you would see in your high school chemistry lab. It looked exactly like that. Just like basic metal shelves with um, equipment and instrument and then jars of specimens in there. There was uh, what I would call the operating room, but there were like 12 tables and we only ever used the one table at the end and the rest were just kind of like dead space. It was almost this feeling like it was built to be bigger or more occupied than it was. Um, and at any given time, I probably never saw more than eight people or humanoid looking um, people together. So I, it was never like a big crowd that I was exposed to. I knew there were parts of the facility that were off limits to me. I don't remember any names of anyone I worked with, zero memory whatsoever. Um, everything came through as English for me. I don't know if they were speaking English or it was a translator, but I only remember having thoughts, very few words spoken to me, and I remember saying yes or no. Everyone looked humanoid. A hundred percent. I did not enjoy my work at all. It was um, awful. And there were, USS R Corp was trying to extract life extension genes or cells or I don't know, parts of the DNA. They, they were very obsessed with living for as long as they could, at least in this project. Um, it was torturous work because these beings were nicer than, than our corp. They had no regard for life or pain or anything. They just had one mission and they were very focused on it. At least this branch of what I was exposed to. From what I understand, they have a long recruitment process, meaning years, and they're checking in on you over these years while you're on earth and they're putting you through next level training each time. And they recruit people who have specific DNA, meaning their human body, who have a certain soul lineage, meaning they're predisposed to certain types of communication or skills and abilities that you have in other life forms that you don't have as human, and fight. So there's a big recruitment process about will you fight or will you die, basically. And they use simulation technology to test that in you. But it's advanced simulation technology to the extent that you don't know you're in a simulation. It feels like it's real life. And they'll see, like, will you use your abilities to save yourself or will you allow yourself to die? And then they gauge your fight strength 
as to whether or not they, um, you make the cut, I guess. All I knew they were looking for in those experiments was how to make their lives last longer. And they were obsessed with anti-aging. So they might be 100 years old, but look like you and I. Like they didn't age the same way that you and I did. They would say, we're millions of years ahead of you. We are millions of years ahead of you. I would guess that USS R Corp lifespan was three to 400 years. If I knew that somebody was 80 and looked 25, that would, make, that would be my guess. That's the only way I could calculate. I mean, the one that I always talk about and remember was the eel, eel, large eel being with the chicken head that was double strapped down. And it was suffering so immensely that it wasn't able to communicate, but it's uh, connected other eels who are telepathically communicating came in to do a sort of death ceremony with it. And it was uh, like one of the most beautiful things I've ever witnessed, the way that they would process the cycle of death for this being to be there for it. But that being didn't talk to me. I'm sure they were resentful at me actually, because you know they were there against their will and I was there as a part of it. The technology being used was rudimentary. It looked like scalpels and needles. and I suspect no anesthesia whatsoever. I mean, they didn't realize they needed sunlight either. It was ridiculous, so. People can be idiots, I mean, across the board. My psychic sense about life extension is that we are, we've been genetically created to terminate before 120. We will not be able to do it without genetic manipulation think in particular we're lacking some organ that we need and in addition to that toxins overload and we age faster than even 120 but without new technology and genetic manipulation we will not see past 120 that's my psychic sense no i have no recollection of being promised money for any services that i did or staying or anything it was kind of like I was told that if I didn't consent, they were going to make it hard for me. I consented, and that was it. And once you're in, you're in, and there's nothing you can do about it. And that's why it is like slavery. You have all freedoms robbed from you. I never tried to sabotage any projects. I kind of had accepted my fate, at least in, in the parts of the timeline that I'm able to remember. I was annoyed, but I knew there was no, there was no hope. I believed there was no hope of trying to sabotage. I just kind of thought, I'll just play this out because I have to. I have one memory. Uh, this is not that long ago. So nothing in my childhood that I remember as far as being a, a return, you know, returning and being a target of any kind of check-ins or except when I was in New York City, which I, I left in 2019, and in 2019, I would have been 34. Um, I went into a, a shop, which I think was Club Monaco. And I, one of the shop attendants turned around really nice and was like, oh, can I help you with anything? And I looked her in the eye and I became almost hypnotized. And then the next memory I have, I guess this is missing time now that I think about it, but the next memory I have is being in a room with that woman and another that come in, and then uh, a male comes in, and my arms are strapped down, but I feel like I'm standing up, which is weird, but my arms are strapped, and I get popped in the side of the head with a needle, and then I get asked my intentions. And I say, I, I don't I have no intentions. I don't, you know, I just answer, I don't even know what this is about. And then he says more and I get popped in the other side of the head and, and he never breaks eye contact. And he says again, what are your intentions? And I said, I told you, I, I don't even know what this is about. I have no intentions. And then I remember being back at my apartment. 
That's it. And I didn't even know about the programs when that happened. So for me, I was like, did I have a weird dream? Like, how, what did that actually happen? And I kind of ignored it. I know the term alter. I understand what it means. And when in a regression, I asked myself not to use that word. So it's important that I don't say alter, that I say split. Because in my experience, I was split one time. So there was me and there was one split that operated in the same body and the same role for my duration there. I, I don't know her name and I have connected um, in meditations in my, uh, in, it was when I lived in New York, so it had been in my mid to late twenties and I saw myself in outer space on a craft in my meditations and I would talk to myself and I at the time thought it was because we live in a simulation or holographic experience and I had found the outer rim of it. That's what I thought at the time. I think the memory wipes would have worked on me if I didn't start doing really intense nervous system training. Um, some of this is talked about in a basic way and it's like Ben Toth's book, Stalking the Wild Pendulum, but I became interested in past lives and psychic abilities and the possibility of simultaneous lives and oversouls. I got sober. I started megadosing supplements, taking yoga, detoxing my body, believing that other things were possible. And I think that I activated, this is my complete personal opinion. I think I activated a part of my brain that lies dormant in most people. I have no idea why I remember it and other people don't. But I know that that's work that I've done that other people don't do. I'm talking about this because I can. And I know that's a privilege that other people don't feel safe to talk about it. I think that I don't have it all right. I know that. I don't remember everything. But if we don't talk about it, we don't give people permission to come forward with what they do remember either. And I feel lucky to have a husband and a family that allow me to speak openly about this and so it's a duty for other victims that I'm speak freely and, and, and share my truth. JackieKenner.com is my website. I still offer medium sessions although my schedule is very full and anticipating maternity leave and I am working on a book called These Things Happened. There's a fundraiser going if you want to support the efforts. And uh, otherwise, I'm not active on any social media or doing anything right now because I'm planning for a baby. With Tony Rod Riggs, uh, yeah, his story needed to be out there in a big way. Um, and I had a, a little bit of a karmic duty with him to get his book out, and I honored it. And um, we made the recall course because it helped me and I wanted that to be there for other people. You can find it on Tony's website, TonyRodRiggs.com. And we did Patreon together for almost two years, just interviewing other experiencers or experts in this field. And Tony's carrying the torch now while I plan for a family life. The recall course are specific, it, it is specific protocols and techniques that people can use if they suspect they've been involved. It's a starting point and it helps you organize things a little bit so that you can take them deeper. Um, it, the best way that Tony explains it is when everything's out here, it's hard to make sense of it, but if you can get some exercises and techniques to start putting it in a little bit of order, then you're able to really focus and take things to new places and, and remember more. But it's hard work. Please consider supporting Super Soldier Talk by purchasing your own Neo Meditation device. Your Neo Meditation device will help you reduce stress integrate trauma, enhance intuition, enhance clairvoyance, and enhance creativity. Get yours now at www.neologicaltech.com.